Well, joining us now is the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, who says that to make amends, Britain must pay reparations to Caribbean countries affected by the slave trade. Good to have you with us this morning. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. What, so that is your position, is it, that, that money needs to be paid? What sort of sums are you thinking of? This is not a simple discussion as to what sort of sums. Um, we've been arguing this for over 20 years, and the CARICOM Repository Commission um, has basically set out a 10-point plan of the different things that they believe need to be done, starting, of course, with an apology, but also dealing with things such as the psychological rehabilitation um, as a result of the trauma, dealing with assistance and remedy in the public health crisis. Most people don't even recall that the diets of slaves were heavily salted and in many instances have led to the kind of um, intergenerational hypertension and diabetes and chronic non-communicable diseases that we see. And then in respect of the debt, um, Caribbean governments at the point of independence, there was no development compact to say, look, this is what you need to go forward. But what they did was to try to reverse the negative aspects of colonialism, which meant dealing with housing, which meant dealing with right to education, right to health care, all of the basic things that normal governments would want to see as part, in fact, of the sustainable development goals today that the United Nations has set up. Now, I said to you that this was started about 20 years ago, mm. largely because in December 2000, I was then Minister of Culture and Education. Mm. Um, I would have been the one leading the Barbados delegation to the UN World Conference Against Racism, um, Xenophobia and Racial Discrimination. And that was one of the proprietary conferences that took place before we went um, to Dur Durban in August, September 2001 for the World Conference. In between there, we would have had a number of meetings in Geneva across the world. In fact, I remember it well because it was the same week that the German government agreed to give compensation to those um, who were affected by, by the awful um, Holocaust of World War II. So that this is not a new concept. What I want to, to say, and I think Prince Harry captured it, there has to be a conversation. It can't be reduced to a headline. It can't be reduced to sensationalizing. And to that extent, therefore, we expect that a conversation, difficult as it may be, is absolutely necessary. The English-speaking Caribbean is perhaps one of the most highly indebted regions in the entire world, with debt-to-GDP ratios um, way above many other countries. And of course, now that we've gone into the COVID pandemic, it's become exceptionally um, difficult for a lot of these countries to be able to raise money on their own because of the high debt burden that they carry, not because of any wickedness, but already because they want to be able to put in place a development compact for their people that was not given to their people prior to independence and the resources were not left for us to do so in a way that the compensation took place at em emancipation. So this... And you're Member. This, this conversation, as you say, or, or this was initially brought up about 20 years ago. We know that Tony Blair, when he was Prime Minister in 2007, did publicly apologise, didn't he? He, he apologised for Britain's role in the transatlantic slave trade. Um, and, that, and that, you know, that's 13 years ago now. Do you feel like, uh, even though we're having this conversation today, that actually the, the, the conversation and the, the tone and what's being talked about has shifted at all in that time? Or do you still feel like 20 years ago when this was started, you haven't got anywhere because you're talking about an apology and clearly Tony Blair has made an apology. And, 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 and I believe others across the world have apologised, mm. but that's the first step. Yeah. I think we need to be able to understand that the underdevelopment of Africa, the underdevelopment of the Caribbean, the underdevelopment of Latin America in many instances is a child of the colonial experiment. And the colonial experiment extracted wealth and in some of these countries, the extractive uh, attitudes still remain such that we've not been able to build the kind of domestic enterprises and the domestic foundation that's necessary to sustain our people. And the biggest problem, more often than not, is mental too. We've removed the legal vestiges to discrimination in many instances, but it is the mental emancipation, um, Bob Marley 
popularize the words of Marcus Garvey. It is the mental emancipation, it's the use of things like blacklisting of um, Caribbean countries, or it's the use of and, and other countries for tax or other purposes. <clears throat> it's just this kind of language that associates negative with black and positive with white. And, and then when you start to look at the difficulties in the United States of America with respect to policing and access into basic services or what it takes to have persons struck from voters' lists, all of these are things that deprive ordinary people from the promise of development. That should be all of ours. And I think that we have a set of people across the world now with a level of consciousness, particularly young people who are recognizing that this existential threat called the climate crisis is causing us to really understand where we stand. Mm -hmm. And as if that were not enough, then comes the pandemic that teaches us the worth of jobs, the worth of family, the worth of the environment, the worth of everything around us. And it's a resetting that perhaps um, we, we couldn't time the two. And that resetting, I think, has given us the sensitivity that, you know, maybe we need to have this discussion. Now people talk much easier yeah. today about mental health. Well, you make a very, very passionate case. You mentioned the pandemic a couple of times. Uh, a neighbour of mine actually found themselves trapped in Barbados when uh, things went into lockdown. We all were rather jealous until we realised how challenging it's been for you, because it seems like a wonderful place to be in lockdown. But it's been very challenging, although very successful, hasn't it? Your cases have been much lower than other parts of the world. You know, we've been lucky in the Caribbean for the most part. Um, and we were able to take actions early on. Our populations have been very, very supportive and very cooperative. And we've been able to contain it. And, what and do we've you make of what we've done here in Britain? Sorry to interrupt you. Do you think we've been quite slow here in the UK? I haven't been following that closely to be able to pass those judgments. But what I do know is that this is one of the most challenging things that any country is going to have to manage. And the larger the country, the more complex the combinations and permutations are to be able to contain movement. So I don't think that you can make a simple judgment on it. Mm. Um, we're accustomed to a Western approach with respect to freedom of movement, freedom of association. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, you now have to contain people's movements and to ask people to do everything differently in order to be able to protect themselves. Stay away from families, stay away from young ones, stay away from old ones. All of these things are disruptive. But it has taught us, as I said, to appreciate. I'm told that you had a very difficult experience and I want to wish your, your, your husband all the best in his recovery. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, Mia Motley, we can hear the crickets in the background mm. yeah. chirping away. It's the sound that I adore when I've been lucky enough to visit the Caribbean. Uh, it but, reminds us of those beautiful beaches and the wonderful warm welcome you get from, from the locals. Uh, and I know that you're offering people, you'd like to offer people who maybe are working remotely and can't get into their offices the chance to come and work remotely in Barbados uh, with a Barbados welcome stamp. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, I think that all of us recognise that apart from the fact that the Caribbean is one of the most travel and tourism dependent regions in the world, and we have the economic fallout is even far greater than, than the immediate fallout from the pandemic, um, public health-wise, we recognise that in looking around, this people seem to do better in outdoors and in this kind of weather. There may be no scientific evidence, there may be, but people feel better, they can breathe, they can do things. Um, the salt water is good for you. Um, you still have to work. This is not going anywhere in a hurry. Um, there's no vaccine yet. There's no therapeutic yet. And why not? Um, there are a lot of people who are already riding it out here. And we recognize that there is a market for it. It requires one or two small changes. We're going to amend the Income Tax Act to be able to deem persons non-resident for taxation purposes. Normally you are within six months, but we're going to do it for 12 months for this purpose. And I think we as a world have to work together. I mean, I talk a lot about moral leadership and walking the walk. And these are not things that we just say we really believe them. And I believe that if we can help people write it out while they help us write out, then that's a win-win situation. And um, I can think of a lot um, of places that persons would like to be in the Caribbean, and why not Barbados? Well, quite. I don't suppose you have a good morning Barbados, because I'd be very happy to come out there. We'd all do a job swap, all, every, we? All, the whole team are saying we're very happy to come out and do the programme from your beautiful beaches, if that's OK with you. 
<laughs> and my director of communications told me that your technical team loves his rig, so we can accommodate you tomorrow. <laughs> I love that.